Thousands Why are you saying it like, like a Yorkshireman says vegan? Vegan. All right, we're vegan. a vegan. All right. All right, we're a vegan. Get some water on it. <laughs> what I was asking, yeah. if that was for compound alone, that's eye-wateringly expensive. It's, it's, it's not a snip, it? that's more like a bris. <laughs> To, to pull in the right shaft, haven't yes. we? Yes. I probably ought to rephrase that. There's nothing worse than getting an incorrect French shaft. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pro Detailer Podcast. Today, we have been joined by the old favourites. We have Mr. Ian Seeley. Hello. Mr. James Keeley. Hello. And we have really quite an action-packed schedule. It's quite often we're sort of... Well, I would say action-packed. Oh, I think there's a fair bit of action going on here. Um, we've got news section. We've got some updates, some exciting updates as well from uh, along the grapevine. Um, and we have uh, also got some car news as well, which is terribly exciting, but we will no, leave we that towards the end. <laughs> No um, car news this week. No car what? news. What? No but, car news. But there isn't any. Uh, um, okay. Well, anyway, let's crack on with news. News. Uh, first, I just want to do a shout out uh, and a kind of a, a good luck to Dave Patterson, who we all know from Lake Country. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's helped us out over a number of issues, most recently on glass polishing. Uh, and he really knows his. He knows his. There he down on Rayon, didn't he? Yeah. And um, what else? He did something else with us before, and I can't remember what it was. He didn't interview. Talking about pads. Here we go. We had the entire feature on just on just on Dave. That was it, Dave. And uh, so that's cool. More but than he, just a channel. Indeed. And he's 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 moved uh, from Lake Country, and he's now. Um, I think he, he previously co-owned a detailing shop. I think, uh, and uh, he's gone back to to running that one. So um, yeah, good luck and um, all the best from us. Um, well, it's a brand. It's a it's a it's a brand, isn't it? It's Oberk Car Care. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's a, brand, oh, yeah, it's a yeah, it's, product it's not brand. Just a oh, I didn't realise that. Oh, no, they've got a full range yeah. of polishes and stuff. Looks that are cool, actually. I should have Facebook stalked him more. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. We'll, really cool. I'm sure we'll be able to get some through for the next uh, next issue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I hope so. We will. Uh, we will put feelers out, hoping on them trade deals. <laughs> get them over here cheap. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was that one. Um, big news this week really is uh, from the land of Mauritius of Dodo Juice. They've had a full rebrand, which I think we've mentioned more than once before about it coming, but now it has come. It's been in progress for quite a while, hasn't it? But yeah, it, it finally landed the other week and it looks really cool. Yeah, it does. It does. It looks it awesome. does. Cool. And it's not just a rebrand though, is it? They've got new stuff. Yeah, yeah. they've got a whole whole host of new products. I had a long conversation because you can't have a short conversation with Dom. A uh, quick shout out to Dom. He announced that he. He read the, uh, listened to the podcast in his motor car. I'd be um, troubled if he read it. Yeah, no, if he read it while while driving, that would be risky. <laughs> uh, and his only criticism was there were too many jingles. <laughs> So that's in honour of Dom. Um, the, um, but no, the rebrand looks cool. We're getting a ton of products in. We'll be doing some reviews and uh, looking perhaps behind the scenes um, about the whole rebrand process because it was pretty involved. Um, I had third parties involved for extra brain power. Uh, not that I needed with, with uh, Dom and PJ around, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're really looking forward to that. That was on Wednesday, wasn't it? And it's now yeah. Thursday. I must so. admit, I was sat pressing refresh on the website when it was time. Oh, that's cool. I did. I, what I, did. I was refreshing. I did, waiting, I did, I waiting did try a couple happen. of uh, options with the password. It was, yeah. I, just, I was trying to hack was it. trying to guess the password. <laughs> Hacker man. <laughs> uh, but no, it looks really cool. And the thing is, is Dodo Juice didn't really need a rebrand. The packaging's always been very cool. Well, but I disagree. I really? Dis yeah, I, well, think, no. I think it's always looked really cool. No, I agree it's looked really cool, but I always feel, felt that when it first came out, it was new and funky and awesome, and now it's no longer the new player. So it's uh, And the thing is that the branding probably alienated those who like square, sort of auto-glim, swiss fax style kind of staid branding, and coach me, that lot, while at the same time it wasn't still new and funky when a whole host of other products have joined. So I felt that they kind of were caught between two stools, and I love the branding, but it oh, wasn't... I'm not, I'm not saying it was a bad idea i'm mm. just saying that the packaging has always been cool yes but it was it's it's sort of a nice refresh it is and and, and, and that's I, I, th I probably see it as a refresh over rebrand for me yeah but now it is, they're it is. woke yeah they are woke now indeed indeed and the, the lovely fold labels and stuff like that and speaking of somebody who's done a bit of the labeling back in the day uh, I, I know how much work it is to get those in how expensive and quality they are so yeah no that's really cool and they've also bought in the new products as, as Ian referred to and most frustratingly having spoken to Dom he reeled them all off and described briefly what they were um, and because they've all got fun funky names that that kind of make you giggle and snigger and equal equal amounts um, I've completely forgotten I know that there is a tire cleaner which which is mostly degreaser with a bit of APC. There's a lubricant 
lubricated APC for those who like a lubricated APC and various other bits. But we're going to do a better job of, of explaining what there is in the future. Well, the, the one that I want to try is the dark matter, which is their satin tire dressing. Yes. I'm a, I like my customers to have shiny tires and I I'm, like my own cars to be I'm with natural. you on that. Yeah. I, hate, I hate satin tire dressing. It gets all over your bum. <laughs> oh, we need we need a drum roll on the the effects. We've got one. Yeah, we had one, didn't we? Didn't no. we? It's not quite the same level. We used to have. We must have removed but it for the car starting noises. That's that's the whole topic, though. Is that I'm 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 with you on that. I like a slightly satin tire dressing as opposed to the whole kind of like you know Maguire's gel, which is very Hot, good as a, slick and wet and. Uh, hey, if you, you want know. your arches doing, it's great. <laughs> yeah. And that well, you know, the show scene is full of people with 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 shiny tires, and then we even saw James pick up on on um i think for graphene tires i've never seen a graphene ceramic, tire in my life. ceramic tires ceramic tires was it yeah, okay. ceramic no, no, tire Ad, no adam's did bring out a graphene yeah. uh, tire thing it was in the news in the last oh okay That's the, to be honest i remember I'd, writing I'd, it i'd prefer a graphene tire to a, to a ceramic tire because ceramic tire is really going to compromise ride quality be almost as bad as a bmw run flat the mother's cucx <laughs> range whatever it, yes cmx cmx range they did a ceramic tire dressing which is Great, but we've we've got rubber tires. They're not ceramic. So yeah, okay. I think we can get it to you work. You just have to blow up the uh, blow up the nanotubes. <laughs> Nan nanobot nanobot tubes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's um, interesting stuff in there. Keep a, keep an eye out. We will be doing stuff in issue eleven with with the lovely dodos, um, and actually, kind of issue what? Where no, not eleven. Now? Thirteen. Thirteen. Why did I say eleven? Is that where you want to be? No, I don't want to be eleven. I remember the time. <laughs> Ah, oh, issue 11. We were in a field taking a photo of an Audi at night and then got accosted by a lorry driver who gave me the code to a padlock key to a large international distribution centre on the basis we didn't It sounds like it. a common San Diego mystery. <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, God, that was a wild night. Um, and we spent it all together in a, in, in a field. Um, but and we anyway. got chased by police. Uh, well, no, we subtly avoided and we saw police. a comet and was, everything. Yeah. Stuff happened, didn't it? It was, it was, it was quite something. I was knackered, That's but then we were always knackered at that time of magazine timing. It was when the brimstone started. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just wish James kept his clothes on longer. Um, yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> what like oh. prolong, prolonged the anticipation? Yeah, I'm redoing all the sound effects for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that also leads on because uh, obviously when uh, Dom is one third of Waxstock, so we had a little chat about Waxstock, and uh, we don't want to do an official kind of update or anything because it's not our place to do so. But at present, his estimation is a seventy percent certainty of going ahead, depending on how the opening up of things happening and whether there'll be further restrictions on the number of people and all the rest of it but they're, they're they're thinking deeply about it and they are utterly dedicated to make it work so unless we're all going to get arrested a lot of new people committed to uh, to exhibit there though aren't they so yeah yeah there's definitely the the, uh, the demand yeah there's demand it's most, a, most a ones. definitely maybe it's a definitely maybe and it all depends on i mean as long as Brilliant we album. don't get another search a search search um you know we should be good and there are other plans in the thing that i won't be exposing um but yeah it'll be it'll be good and, and just trust us when we say that everybody behind the scenes is doing their very best to make sure it goes ahead which is cool because we'll be there too right in front of the stage making a tit of ourselves i'll probably be on stage now and then making a tit of myself well, you do that without going to work stock so to be fair it's it's well all it takes is a stripper pole yeah <laughs> Coventry is a very underrated tourist destination. Um, I think Ian rates it as highly as Swindon and Reading, to be honest. Really? I, I think it definitely equals Swindon in terms of places that I don't care about. <laughs> I, I prefer Swindon to Coventry. Well, of course, I you, know, you live there. No, I don't. This is true. You can't hate where you live. No, there's, Swindon's got great facilities. I mean, it's got all the out-of-town shopping. You don't have to sell it to us. We're not moving there. You know, you know it's got, you've made your choice. Well, you said that, but, you you know, the, never we say never. We're definitely not moving to I Swindon. mean, we know you moved to Dawson because it's uh, just down the road from the AA depot. Uh, is it? Is it? Oh, no, it's RAC on the M5, isn't it? Yeah, it is. RAC. I think it was highways. No, no, RAC no, have got a, a proper the, depot. They have the control, have the control tower. Damn it, I, I only switched to yeah. the AA a couple of years ago. That. It looks oh, really cool. Oh, I know. It's the baby... Baby of the. It's a tiny Sears Tower. <laughs> That's oh, okay. The, um, Birmingham one. Yeah, because there's one in Bristol just on the like the corner between the M4 and M5 as well. Yes, that's the RAC. Oh, that's what. Oh, yeah, well, sorry. Yeah, near the one with the RAC yeah, on it. Yeah, marginally closer. I mean, it's still a good 25 minutes, probably 30 minutes on the back of a, of a lorry. I mean, but that's, that's basically next door to, down here. That's kind of where you need to measure it from. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
that's true that is true um so anyway there's a wax talk uh, other news uh to those who like listening to these sort of things which we presume is you either unless this is being used as some sort of audio torture technique and you're being are you going to do the samaritans number next <laughs> no no no, no. i was, I was going to suggest the ukda mini casts uh, which are coming out which are like little bite-sized discussional pieces with information and excitement ian do you want to tell us more well i think you've kind of summed it up there with the excitement i don't want to oversell it Okay. I think you've already oversold it with the excitement, frankly. No, I, it's... I thought they're pretty good. I'm not involved, yeah. well, but they're pretty good. Well, the Academy does a, a, a blog every uh, every week on various topics. We decided that we can't actually put all of the uh, the thoughts and things like that down onto paper. It's much better as a, as a discussion. So we roped in James and Rich to sit down and talk about small little subjects for 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. Time for a tea break kind of thing. And when, well, we, yeah. and when we're done talking about Rich, we then talk about detailing stuff. <laughs> hey. Very yeah. happy. Yeah, so, you know, next time you're having a poo or something, um, that's probably something to line up on your on your Spotify or whatever you can get it on. Can you get it on Spotify? Yes. Yes. So there you go. Don't so. you drive home for a poo every time, though? <laughs> I only need to poo twice a week. It's fine. I can schedule. <laughs> um, moving rapidly on. Um, yeah, this is getting a bit scatty. <laughs> it's, it's a bit scatty. Um, product releases. I, I've just been doing a little bit of a, a little bit of a search, and Autoglim have bought out a number of products recently. Um, but there are two that I'm kind of focusing on. One is Autoglim Rapid Ceramic Spray, which is twenty quid for five hundred mils. So it's at the top end of the price price scale for for a kind of a quick detailer with a bit of ceramic in. Which when does the Rapid come into it? You can squirt it really quickly. Oh, okay, is it, so it's, it's got like a double trigger thing. I don't know, but you can definitely you can you can squirt it fervently. That's not the official autoglim line, but I, I think it probably should be. Well, I'm sure, they, I'm sure they've looked up what fervently means and they didn't use it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> I have you know that Mark, Mark, uh, shout out Mark Doherty at at um, Autoglim, very well educated man. He's into Saabs, so if he wasn't at Autoglim, he'd probably that's be why an he architect. Use the word fervently. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he's probably. Well, he is. But Don't Saab than drivers me. only use architectural terms um, or accountancy terms? I think we use Vauxhall yeah. dealerships. Oh, that's a dig. That's a dig. I had a Saab, I'll have you know. I had a Saab. Briefly. I wanted Saab. I wanted wanted the 2.8 twin turbo, which is a GM engine. That's the worst one to have. Or the 1.9 TTID. Oh, God, that's a Vauxhall engine. Yeah, but 180 brake So basically what you're saying is you wanted wanted Vectra. Well, I'm not snobby about Vectras. I quite like Vectras and NCDs. Ian loves them. No, he doesn't. He doesn't like any Vauxhall. No. He had a Frontier, he had no, a front no, he's going to bang on about it being nice. Mr. Vauxhall, what do you want but to no, say? Uh, 900, 900 turbos, anything pre GM. I've never driven n- a. The, the bad. 9.3s, 9.5s were both awesome cars as well. Yeah. So especially the as ones. As long as you didn't want performance of any sort, though. Oh, great. The, no, rot. 2.3 rubbish. litre hot. Yeah, those are the most boring cars. Down, car man. You've driven. Oh, no, he's they're talking not. nonsense. Absolute Clearly, he's run out crap. of talent. My God, I'm siding with a BMW enthusiast on this. That's how wrong you are. That B205 engine was an absolute work of art. 2.3 litre. Oh. Turbo charge. What well, was high output turbo? And then they had <laughs> fabulous. What was cars. that? You had the hot, which was high output. What was the low output? Was it a lot? No, they had a different. No, it wasn't a lot. It was just a. Um, it did. It was uh, just a standard two three T because I had a two liter T, but it wasn't the hot. Okay. Um, because the only nine three that came with the two point three engine was the Vigan. Yes. That had a two point three <sighs> hot engine there rapid those things well my dad had a 9000 they did in the old 9000 days you had a hatchback uh, which was a c uh, x or csx or something like that and then you had a cd s or x which was a saloon he had the hatch with the two, two i think it was only a two liter turbo I don't nine nine thousand nine thousand yeah, yeah. I, the 900 was just before my nine three yes yeah because the nine because they did the 900 they twice the, didn't they yeah when they all, start making the nine three it was 98 99? I was earlier. Uh, no, no, yeah. was no I've seen Pete. Well, then, no, there's still Pete Reg 900 shapes. Oh, maybe 97 then. I mine think was, it, mine they did a, start to cross over quite a lot. Yeah, yeah the late 900 mine was, looked, a 99. was rebadged the 93. Yeah. As in, there are 900s and 93s that look yeah. pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, because my front mount intercooler was off 900. The annoying thing is, I do ah. think the 93 looks like a very nice car. Drives it one. looks drives like one as well. It's horrible. No, I didn't like it. Oh, How many have you driven to come to your conclusion? Five or six. Okay, well, that's a fair sample. One that yeah. was supposedly Ermshire um, tuned. Ermshire? Um, sure. Yeah. Or. Oh. Ermshire. Um, sure. And there's a, there's a tuning company down well, in Kent who does it as well, isn't there? there? Well, Abbott Racing called. was the one. That was one. Abbott, Abbott Racing. Abbott, and, that was it. And yeah. then there was. Oh, what was that? Uh, I always wanted a, a Carlson. Swedish company. There was a yeah, Carlson. Was, uh, Carlson, yeah. They do some serious Mercedes. That too. 900 yeah. Carlson that was in here was. Oh, that was beautiful. beautiful. That was an original 900, though. 
Yeah, because it was the nine. The fast nine three was yes. a vegan. The fast nine five, well, nine thousand. Why are you a saying it like like a Yorkshireman says vegan? Vegan. I we're a vegan. vegan. All right. All right. We're a vegan. Get some water on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the nine five Aero Hot was an incredible car. Yes. And I very nearly bought a red one for about six hundred quid. Um, wow. But for some reason, because they're tuned, didn't they? Those blocks can take good power. They're like the Volvos. Yeah. They, yeah, they yeah. whop a bigger turbo one. I mean, bear in mind that Saab ran a um, Pikes Peak 9.3 yeah. with a 2.3 in it, or maybe two. Mm. Can't remember. These but it's like 1,100 horsepower. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. World Rally Cross. They did a World Rally Cross in 9.3s. Well, they're big. I mean, they're big in competition. Remember back in the days when I worked in classic cars, we had this competition prepared 9.2, I want to say, 1977 with a Ford V4. Terrible, terrible thing for me to drive because the seat was fixed in place for a little tiny man to drive around, had a big roll cage that a fat ass like me can't climb in and out of, and it would stall if you just left it to idle, it would just stall, and then wouldn't restart because the battery ran flat. I, in Suffolk, was in a little place called Snape in Suffolk, and there was a funeral procession, and I accidentally overtook it in my full, like, race prepared with all the stickers and everything, 9.3 and, or 9.2, and then it died and then wouldn't restart to the point where the people who were like at the front of the funeral procession, because the, the, the coffin was kind of slightly further back, actually pushed me out the way on my request, admittedly. And I, I it, one of my most embarrassing experiences in my life. I'd have probably got in the coffin at that point. And just like I think forgotten that everything had happened. I think he was occupied. <laughs> well, they did a, it was a two stroke, wasn't it? They yeah. did a two stroke. You had, it had and to they would still to... race them now. We well, have to blip it downhill if you've if you've got the clutch if it's yeah. kind of an idle because it doesn't oil itself very nicely or something. There was some complexity. Anyway, I only drove it a couple of times, but by God, it was stressful <laughs> and uncomfortable. The best thing about all Saabs really is the night switch. That no, the best different. thing about Saabs is the little plastic hook they have on the driver's side to put your parking uh, ticket that's, in. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That that's uh, genius design. Uh, oh. Isn't that on? I feel like other, some other cars got That's that. That's the well. first first one I've ever, ever seen. In fact, I think three. the Astra G had it. Uh, they probably stole it from they Saab. Could have, they, they could have cross fertilized it. The, um, but yeah, the, the, just the, think that Saab could have been owned by either Koenigsegg or Spiker. Could have been. Spiker signed on the dotted line. Yeah. Spiker who, though? But I mean, Spiker's Spiker Dutch. Grove. Spiker Grove. <laughs> no, we're spooky. They're, they're still got a huge following. Spiker are, uh, are impressive for getting so much power out of the Audi 4.2 V8, which I, I still aspire to. I'm always amazed that you can make a car with manacles fitted to it <laughs> and a storage for your whips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, those were the days. Yeah, the but, night, night switch on the Saab where you can turn all interior lighting off apart, apart from, the speedo. from the speedo. Yeah, and, and even did you, they turn half the speedo off. Yeah. So, so you only see the relevant bit because of you're where you are. Need the <laughs> no, I think it moves with it. I, I yeah, don't it know, does, but it, it does. It moves yeah. the speedo. Uh, and the air vents were incredible because they were, cool. they, they were basically 10 potato waffles laid one behind each other. And when you move the knob, it just slightly offset the potato yeah, waffles from each other. Like a palalala. Is that how they did the aircon? So they actually put it through frozen potato waffles, and that's how they. <laughs> the I mean, they're waffly versatile. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, what I quite liked also was how the you had to like put it. The, the key was oh, down. No, you had hand to break, leave it in reverse and you to had get to the key it, out the ignition. Yeah, to stop them starting themselves and going runaway. But the funny thing about that is, if I, that's why I would imagine they were never used as hire cars, because can you imagine? I mean, I, I got phoned up by people who just sort of borrowed a Saab or whatever and couldn't start it, and they called me because I'm there go-to car person and it's always because they haven't cool, put it tragic. in the right thing. Yeah, they're pretty tragic. I'm pretty tragic. We're kind of, it's, it's a thing. Um, How is it at the bottom of the barrel? <laughs> <laughs> Greasy. Um, so yeah, we've talked about we did talk about this. We're on new products. Today. Yeah, we're Still. on new products. And then, well, the other thing, and again from AG, not that we're sponsored in any way by them, uh, although our door's always open, um, is the AG UHD polishing compound. So it is a compound of ultra high definition, apparently. Has he got stuff in it? This is the first thing, before you announce the price, I'd like to know if it has things in it. It comes in a UHD box, and it comes with three pads, a medium, a fine, and a finishing. Okay, is it a sealant as well, or is it just a compound? Um, it, Can you it put it through a snow foam lance? I don't think so. Well, well, listen, wait, wait, anything wait a minute, will wait. go through a snow <laughs> foam lance if you try hard enough. Well, yeah, but the chafing. Um, the um, no, I, I don't. I, I don't think so because they talk about putting UHD you wax on top of it. You haven't researched this at all, have you? Well, I, you know, it was a thing. But so it comes with three pads. It comes with three pads okay. in a presentation box. Does okay, it come well. with microfiber? I think Does it, it come with a open yeah, cell but. sponge to ap to apply it? No. No, it doesn't Does it come, come with a, a wafer. No. No. Interesting. But 
For 500 mil, chocolate mint. It's it's a snip under 55 quid, according to the source I was looking at. But, so this is what I was asking. Yeah. If that was for compound alone, that's eye-wateringly expensive. It's, it's, a it's bit, not a snip, it? that's more like a bris. <laughs> <laughs> However, with three pads, pads are usually about nine quid each. Yeah. So you're looking at 30 quid in pads, 25 quid. And it's still kind of getting there mm. for 500 mil. Microfiber. I mean, they're nine pound each if you don't use... Like Sphizzer, which are nicely priced. Yes, that's and true. High quality. It's true, but Shout it is out. Autoglim. Hmm. It, is, it is Autoglim, though, so I would imagine this is a, a crossover retail and professional product. That will... Yeah, I think I think it's still, by the branding and everything, it looks to me to be primarily a retail. Okay. What's yeah, the price going to be in the Halford sale? Uh, well, it depends if you can get two other items free when you buy one, I guess. Or find a Halfords that hasn't shut down. Our Halfords has shut down. It's really Good. depressing. Good. No, what's really depressing is that it's obviously quite an old one because it had Halfords in the uh, in the floor out front. Yes, I saw that. But that is a bit of a shame. I actually took a photo of it. But it was the fact that you... black and white for Instagram. It, it was, was quite sad. It was the hmm. fact that you went upstairs and the floor was like one of those fairground things. Where but it had sort upstairs. Of... Oh, no, no, you never go upstairs in Halford. Upstairs is for bikes. Why the hell do I want a bike for? No, oh, what, the, one in, the one in Sirencester had an upstairs. Yeah, that's yeah. where the bikes were. No wonder you never went up there. No. No, but of course do, I know. I just they don't was, do penny farthings. No, I just was serving them out the top top floor window. I only ever go there for fluids sometimes. If I have an emergency requirement for fluids, which I do quite often with my guests. Whenever Simon's working. <laughs> uh, so, um, what are the new products we got that aren't Uh Well, uh, Motel. Now, this is something that you found. Um, yes, Motel, so, who make lube. No, and break, break. I've got Motel in my in my in my yeah. So master cylinder, uh, tenuous link, name drop clang. Um, I know the guys at Speedworks uh, British Touring Car team who are the Toyota factory team now. Okay. They are now Motul Racing, Toyota Gazoo Racing, Ooh. Speedworks Racing, BTCC. Attention to. Uh, are they racing the Yaris in the BTCC? N- no, they've got the new Corolla and it looks wicked. I was going to say, really? do they, do oh, they want a sponsorship awesome. opportunity? Uh, yeah, the, you know, they can <laughs> yeah, pay me field. 25 grand. Yeah, um, and, and it's continuing sales, obviously. Awkward, awkward uh, popular news topic <laughs> there. In, in other news as well, is. Um, Something. Oh, I've been, I've been, you've been aired out. <laughs> I've been uh, tumbleweeded out. <laughs> um, yeah, so Motul, who are a famous French lubricant company. They're French. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah French. Massive in motorsport. Um, yes. They have had a motorcycle cleaning range out for quite some time, um, but they've just released a car care range too. Well, that's pretty exciting. Um, so, yeah, I would if the quality is anything like their lubricants, then mm. I would imagine it's pretty decent stuff. Well, their dot four motorsporty stuff that I use, you pointed out it goes out of date. RBF 660. That's the one. Mm. And I've because I've, I've, I'm on a, a separate car topic, I'm needing to find a bit of brake fluid. So I hunted through my supplies. But you said it, it doesn't last all that long once it's in a car. No, it's race fluid. So you're supposed to do it at least once a year. Okay. At least. I used to do mine twice in the, in the track car. But under heavy use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's very thin, very hygroscopic, hygroscopic. so it draws water in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, if it sits out in the winter, you want to throw it away. Gotcha. Keep the fluid though. <laughs> I've actually got two cars with it in, and they've both been out for winter. Um, um, so yeah, that looks quite cool. Uh, normal branding, red bottles, Myrtle, Myrtle everywhere. Mm-hmm. Myrtle. Myrtle. I hope they're making it themselves and not just playing on their brand. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, but McLaren released a range of products recently. I suspect it's along those sort of... <laughs> how, how, many, how many of those products have they had to take back under warranty? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how many have had catastrophic failures? <laughs> Only joking, McLaren. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but really. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I hope they let me in an open prison. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, and there is one more from our, our oh, friend's pneumatic... Beloved friends. Henry, my dear Henry. Oh, Henry. And the vacuum cleaner. That's They've pneumatic released. without a P. <laughs> yes. That is pneumatic. New, new from pneumatic. So we tested in issue 12... 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, weren't they? That was the issue. They were NICADs. Um, Old school. Yeah. It's like my radio control cars. Performance-wise, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, don't know where it went. 
There you go. Um, so we've heard news that the HX300, I think it's called, is now with LiPo batteries, which was one of our mm. um, criticisms. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I've checked, but it's 350 watts. It's now a digital motor, not yeah. an analog motor. And brushless, I would imagine. Therefore. And runtime is 80 minutes. Charge time is 60 so if you get a I, spare assume, battery, I assume we're kind of taking uh, credit for this a bit like you know the whole Top Gear wing thing. Well, the, the, <laughs> it's definitely cool. down to the fact that our review commented on how the battery tech was old. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why they've changed it. Definitely. I, I, definitely. Yeah, that's how we um, influence big multinational, multi-billion pound, well, multi-million pound companies. Yeah, so I think that the... Um, oh, that's not what I was looking for. Let me just try and find it. Talking but, with yourselves. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it is. Oh, they're still 36 volt. Ah, oh, 36. Okay. So pretty, I was looking at power tools on the weekend because you know that's what a man does on the weekend. And I've had Dewalt have got 54 volt like drills that just gorgeous but terribly expensive. Um, so yeah. So it's uh, longer run time, more power, increased cleaning. We're gonna start tool time. Part of the. <laughs> Oh, oh so I would. <laughs> I would. My reciprocating saw I'm so proud of. Yeah, so N NX300 it is, and it's got lithium batteries now. So, cool. Well, that's going to uh, be something we need to get another demo unit that can disappear. No. <laughs> really broken my heart Will once. the new batteries run on the old-style units? Ooh. Well, I'd, I would imagine probably. if uh, they're 36 volt, well, why not? Mm, yeah, there might be maybe. more to it than that. Um, but it says using their new uh, interchangeable battery system, so maybe they've got more, more. products on the way. Oof. Cordless wet vac, there's a thing. That's if yeah. they can, if they can, uh, even if it took two batteries, yeah. if they can do a cordless wet vac. What a lifesaver that would be. Well, what else do they do? Hetties, uh, Hetties, <laughs> Charles. Uh, so Hooters. basically, just different colours. <laughs> well, you have still haven't found out if Henrys are called uh, different names. I'm sure in France no, they're, they're called not. Henri. Henri's. No, 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 aren't they? No, they got the same names. If you ask, if, if you point to a Henry and ask a Frenchman what it, what it should be said, they'll say Henri. It's true. They will. Anyway. Um, and also, because the different colours, can we just clarify different colours? Henry is a conventional dry vac, and then the wet vac is, is George. the same one that's pink. Okay. Henry and, Hen Henry and Henrietta are the same movers. Yeah, they've just self George is a green wet vac with yep. mid sized canister. Right. James is a small, small, <laughs> Henry-sized industrial Hoover that's sturdier and chunkier. Uh, <laughs> uh, Charles is light blue, and he is mid-sized canister, and he Large is a is. wet and dry Hoover. Okay. With, uh, I think you can put extraction on it. Um, I mean, any any Hoover's a wet and dry Hoover. Yeah, it's well, just the, for how the, long they last. The the car. Well, not saying it's necessarily true for all of them, but <laughs> my car, a wet and dry Hoover, was not so wet. It did a fire. Well, so. that's good job. It was already wet. Then it'll come out <laughs> yeah, that did a fire when it had too much water in it. Um, what other Henrys are there? I think that's the extent of my knowledge. Yeah. Gone. Yes. Yeah, Henry, Henrietta, George, Charles, James, Edward. There's an Edward as well. Is that is that a posh one? Edward is mid size and blue as well. But I'm is not he sure shiny? Dry in the royal blue. I think Edward might be a, a, a mid canister dry Hoover. I, so hang on, are we saying there's only one female pneumatic Hoover out there? Well, clearly it's you know that good. There only needs to be one. <laughs> well saved. <laughs> And we are back. We've been talking mostly in our little break about the different types of Henrys and pneumatics and stuff. And we've learnt much, but now thoroughly confused ourselves. But the upshot is, I remember, an Edward is a tall Henry. That's well, Edward that's, is a tall Henry. Charles is wet and dry. That's, a, that's about all we can remember. <laughs> that's, that's, did, we that's decide, did we decide if Andrew was the kid's version? Oh, and, he, and Henrietta, Henrietta, Henrietta is now shortened to Hetty. We'll ignore that wasn't said. Okay. Okay. So Sorry, we'll ignore it was cool, said. Cool. Ignore, oh, what, what, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, so Henrietta is now shortened to Hetty. We're not sure if it ever was Henrietta, but in our world it was. Yeah, and that's Hetty. what matters. Yeah, yeah. our little. And our James little. is indeed the short and dumpy industrious one. Yes. Yes, you should be. He's yellow. I quite like the colour of yellow there. Um, 
But this brings us now on to our broader sort of discussional topic, which is as a consequence of lockdown and the closure of all the hand car washes or the expected closure of all the hand car washes. Um, it's fascinating speaking with a PVD hat on because we have gone through the roof. So normally we get about 250 searches a day on the website. At the moment we're getting about 500 a day. Normally we get three or four quick quote forms through from the site and we're getting over 10 a day at the moment. And that is because there are many more people searching for, for getting their car sorted. And I was musing about it, and I think for those who normally go to a hand car wash and pay anywhere from five to 20 quid, I guess, for, for work, the options are either have a dirty car, do it yourself, go to a tunnel wash, or hire a professional, independent car care professional, basically. Um, and um, obviously, quite a few are taking the latter choice, which is great to see. But at the same time, there are an awful lot of people coming from that kind of, uh, from a value point of view, are used to spending a tenner and having their car superficially cleaned yeah but it's the like same that. old story you can spend five quid on a burger at mcdonald's or you can spend 20 quid on a burger at a restaurant mm. they're two different things I you were going to say burger king <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the m6 near reading <laughs> yes, how does that feel ian Ooh. the m6 near reading no, no the burger king near reading yeah um, uh, burger kings the, the, the strengths and services are extort and i'm willing to go on record and say this they're extortionate with the burger kings yes. where not strengthen. That's, yeah, that's strengthen. The well, they're pretty expensive too. But no, what am I thinking of? The red, it's it's the reading services or no, to, no memory. Uh, okay. I'm thinking of memory services. That's Chiefly? The, no, not Chiefly. I never because you have to go all the way off the M4 and then you end up on the A34 by mistake and you end up in Oxford. What's, what was the one that we stopped on the way back from Italy? That was Reading. That was Reading. Was it? Yeah. Memory, I've stopped out quite regularly because it's exactly 10 miles from the junction where the I used thing to is, live. though, is it, the rent on, on the services must be massive for those businesses. Yeah. It must be horrendous. It's not as if the profits are absolutely huge because they've only got choice of one place they can eat. Well, no, they're, uh, well, they're, no, a lot of them, they've got a couple. They've got yeah, but they're all owned by one person. Ah, I see what you mean. It's all, yeah. it's all one kitchen. It's all exactly the same food. They just slide <laughs> through with a slightly different wrapper. <laughs> I, I, when I go to Burger King, I get confused at any fast food place and just panic. Although I do like how McDonald's now you can order on these touch screeny things, which is really cool because then you especially don't in this day and age. That's exactly when you want us to touch the same surface as hundreds <laughs> of other people. Better than having to communicate. Um, and then you get put on the spot. They go next, please, and you look up and you panic. It's like oh, I don't know what I'm having. And but I always just have try you tried the, the app yet? Biggest thing. No, I wouldn't. I James, try James keeps on going on about it, saying it's the best thing. Is that there's an app? Is there? Is yeah, this yeah. for McDonald's or Burger King? But McDonald's. Okay, but there's like um, you know we're not doing a desperate plug for McDonald's. I like some of my free stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like thirty percent uh, off Monday. Ich liebe dich. German version is well better. You like what? <laughs> uh, yeah, like thirty percent off Mondays and things like that. Okay. I don't pay anything for Mondays. Well, that's, that's no, down to you, isn't it? Privilege, happened. privilege. Um, I'm used to just going up and shouting at the sort of train conductor in the box there. <laughs> <laughs> this is McDonald's. I want a Whopper. It's McDonald's. <laughs> Whopper. <laughs> Don't wrong please, please have you a full tantrum. What, what, of course I do. <laughs> How dare you find me the manager? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very confusing. But then since I've stopped eating gluten and stuff, I haven't been to a McDonald's or a Burger King for a very, very long time. And I'm sad. Or had happiness in your life. Oh, I think that went in 1997. Gluten is the route to core happiness. I, initially, you get like a you get a high and then you get a low. And yeah, well, is... you don't get a low if you never stop. Look no, at me. You do. Look at me. You do. I, yeah. am, I am riding a wave of gluten. <laughs> Would you prefer to be allergic to gluten or dairy? I'm dairy. allergic to both. Dairy. Dairy. No, see, I, uh, I am kind of intolerant to dairy. I miss cheese. But I mean, I I'm tell intolerant you what, of a lot of things, but dairy, I, d I, I need cream in my life. No, I can live without cream happily, even without intolerances. No, I can't I can't do without bread. Cream, cream, no, cream that doesn't suit. No the, ice creams. The, yeah, I cope with that. Uh, I mean, I like Yeah, pistachio. but you can have gelato instead. No, uh, you, you do have to have cream in that. You don't have to, do you? They do in gelato. Ice, ice gelatos. In what? Ice gelato with just, just fruit and stuff in it, sorbet. That's a sorbet. Uh, that's not I thought gelato cream. wasn't dairy. No, gelato's dairy. What is this gelato malarkey? More like, when it comes to uh, frozen eggless, stuff... Which is for your delatte. You don't need any more than a calypso or a magnum if you're feeling flash. We can't have a magnum if you're dairy-free, can I you? know, I can't. This is this is it. To be honest, though, I mean, as you know, I'm, I'm dairy-free with most things unless I'm in well, here. You, you're like a part-time vegetarian. Yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> you know, it, just cutting down, trying to do my bit for the environment. Yeah, no, it's that's that's. But I don't have I don't have milk and tea. Yeah. Of, oh yeah, bacon's yeah. not meat, is it? It's just like gold. It's not. <laughs> okay, not we meat, all, it's life. I I, I, honestly, I've tried my very best with bacon. 
Yeah. And it's just not the Wasn't same. Wasn't he on the set of Oliver? It was, it was uh, Fagin. Fagin, yeah. i tell you what, when I went to uh, Egypt years ago and had beef bacon, the first sort of couple of breakfasts were quite a struggle, I have to say, but I, I got into it. I've tried bacon a few times and it is like... Well, hang on, beef bacon, that is that different? Because that does... made of beef. Yes, so that doesn't sound very vegetarian. Yeah, no, no. vegetarian bacon. I, think I, not... I, could, I could cope not. with that, but the, the bacon, they're not even trying. Okay. No, it's... it's 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 hard it's hard work. It's, I, I could never. It, it, I'll either stop eating bacon, or I'll carry on eating bacon. There is no in between for me. Well, well everything else. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to try the alternatives. The Alpro um, cupper, my cupper. Yeah, you're a big fan of milk that. replacement I'm for not, tea is brilliant. Yeah, I, think. Not, I prefer just normal Alpro. Lacto yeah, but you yeah, but you're used to like. I like it milk. Yeah. yeah, but I like cream. Ian will probably drink it. It's like cream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Well, my partner is a vegetarian wannabe vegan, and I'm a uh, n- none of the none of the above. And however, in the household, that means that we basically eat tofu a lot. And it, I, I know when there's she wants something or done something wrong because she goes to the farm shop and gets me bacon for Sunday, which is lovely. But bear, it's, bear in mind, she listens to this. And no, that, she doesn't. She listened off. once when there was a reference, and she was determined to try and find the reference. She's no no way she can be listening. So she hasn't again. heard all the other things that have been said. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Like when he started smoking again and then stopped twice. Okay, that's a low blow. <laughs> that's a very low you, blow. You admitted to it about four podcasts ago, so you can't even say that. Yeah, but that was it. Was like when in Rome. Apart from it, wasn't Rome. It was Leipzig or somewhere. Um, Where was it? Oh, it well, was Germany. Wasn't Germany. it? Germany. And. Uh, I had I had one on UK turf while waiting for the for the no two while waiting for the Channel Tunnel Channel <laughs> thing with jiggles, uh, but I'm not I'm uh, she's convinced if I have one ever I'm going to go back to smoking full time I, I I you were you were pumps and cigarettes off of Reggie, yes oh that was in Italy that was yeah in but Italy. I, it was yeah, in Italy. overseas doesn't count does it overseas well, doesn't count in well no I, I used to I, smoke when I went to Germany and then give up when I came home well to be fair Ian went off to Greece a non-smoker and came back a smoker that was only a week. We desperately tried to smoke again when we were in Germany. Yeah, you did it try. It did not work. I, I encouraged it. Yeah, it wasn't happening. It, it, but uh, that's it. As I just, I do, I do sometimes just dream of. So what you're saying is Charlie's worried about if I have one that I'll suddenly turn to the dark side and become which a, a heroin addict. Which is basically addict. what has happened. No, it hasn't. I mentally. Mentally, well, yeah, but my head's pretty, pretty messed up anyway. I mean, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to be in there. Christ. No, hey, what were we talking about? Um, we were talking about hand car washes closing and the impacts that there they have um, on, on, on stuff. And so it, it's, it's interesting. What I'm hoping is that we will convert, because from my point of view, I really want everybody to be using independent car care professionals. That's where we were. Right, yes. Let's rewind. So it's like going to McDonald's and paying five pounds for a burger. Yes, or going to a posh restaurant and paying Because then, then we went Burger King, yeah, veganism, we got distracted. milk replacements, cigarettes... Yeah. Did you Italy. know lacto-free isn't actually a milk replacement? It's milk that's just had the lacto removed. From- oh, we're diversifying again. Yes. <laughs> um, Gotta love Arla. Thank you, Arla. You've made my life bearable. Unless you're dairy intolerant, which is different to lactose intolerant, because lactose is a sugar, but you can be allergic to dairy and not lactose. I'm lactose. Um, so yeah, you you know you can get two types of burger. One will feed you and make you feel full, and so will the other. But one will be infinitely better. Well, that's just it. And what what hopefully this or experience better is better, and the other one will scratch your car. It's it, exactly exactly. So this, that's this, the this, metaphor. And what we're doing is forcing people to those posh restaurants for twenty quid burgers. And some, I'm hoping, will sit there and think this is good meat. Ah, but now let's change it up a bit. Mm. What if you went to McDonald's and paid five pounds for a burger, and they said if you get sick, it's nothing to do with us. And then he went to the restaurant and, restaurant and said, here's your £20 burger. I am insured. If you get sick, we will look after you. We'll make sure that everything is looked after. We'll booper you. We'll yeah. make sure that you're There's a much lower for. chance of you getting sick in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to wash our effect. hands. We're not going to yep. dip that. various things into the, the batter. And You only do that once, trust me. It's the fryer that does the damage, not the batter. <laughs> so, you know, and that's effectively where we're at. You know, there are hand car washes out there that do have insurance, that do have experienced staff. Yeah. They do exist. Um, we're not trying to uh, typecast anything at all. But there are a large majority that don't. Mm. Um, and we've seen uh, Bentleys being driven through brick walls and offices and stuff and staff disappearing as soon as it happens. Yeah. Um, you know, the guys that we are looking at are insured. Uh, a lot of them have been through their assessments. We're hoping that a lot of them more... Yeah, actually uh, pass a test. Yeah. yeah. Time-served guys is going to get through it as well. Mm-hmm. 
the two different things and questioning the pricing between the two is is almost impossible well i know a lot of the guys are getting a lot of people going oh how much you know and, and they're trying to converting and as i say some will just walk away because it's too much but some of them will say i'll tell you what i'm going to treat myself apparently some people are getting rich in lockdown i don't understand how but i suppose less pubbing and clubbing and tubbing um but the um point being is it's a really interesting change demographic and then the other side which you highlighted which is um those who are going to automatic car washes now as opposed to going to hand car washes automatic could potentially cause more damage although there have been tests done to say that a dodgy hand car wash is more damaging yeah, potentially than a paid for by the automatic car wash association of europe <laughs> i thought yeah. it was fifth gear well yeah me <laughs> But yeah, I mean, we, we, we've seen the technology that they're putting into these automatic car washes because we went mm. to the car wash show. Yeah. And it is astounding. And they have self cl uh, self clean procedures. Yep. So I'm sure. Standards have definitely improved. Well, they, they have to. I mean, the, the automatic car wash society or, or uh, world, mm. they're not idiots. Hello. They know what they do to vehicles over time. We're not saying straight away, we're saying over time. Yeah. Countries like Germany where it's illegal, not illegal, but there are regulations on washing your car at home, you have to go to an automat or you have to go to a, a wash station. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they need to progress with the technology. Whether the maintenance of these car washes in the UK is kept up to scratch, whether they're using the latest technology. Yeah, different it, question. That, yeah. That, that's a different question. And without a doubt, the the increased usage of automatic car washes will without a doubt increase traffic to detailers mm -hmm. whether it be through the current owner or the new owner at some point that vehicle will be in the hands of somebody will look at it in the sunlight even if they're not into detailing they'll look at it and say oh god it looks a mess mm -hmm. i don't know why it looks like that or how but it looks a mess i'm going to go and get it looked up yeah so actually long longer term medium term should we say yep. I think I think the industry is possibly in quite a strong position. I think we should bounce back. I know there's a lot of guys that have suffered terribly, and you know it's really sad. Mm -hmm. We've lost a lot of good people in the industry, but I think the guys that have um, you know really bolted down and and sat it out, sat I'm out, hoping yeah. that you know they're gonna they're gonna really benefit from a bounce back. And I yeah. think the economy is gonna be weird it will be weird and again a strong economy is not necessarily gonna you know everybody thinks oh well if people aren't buying new cars i'm gonna have protection stuff but actually if you're forced to hold on to your car for a couple of years extra yep. there's more inclination to go and get it you know you detailed to invest into it a little yeah. Bit, yeah. yeah yeah exactly so yeah I, I don't think it's doom and gloom at all i think it's just a matter of the next sort of month or two of kind of getting through this waiting yeah. for the vaccines to take take shape um and we might have kind of effectively <laughs> converted a, 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 a greater number of people to start using independence i hope so, I hope so. Which would be awesome. Be awesome. This is Pro Detailer Magazine Car News. We have had an exciting couple of weeks here. Don't use the phrase we <laughs> for starters. <laughs> Let's remove Ian and I from this situation entirely. Okay, well, hang on. Do you Unless have any interesting say, car news? Uh, have I made a giant mistake? Please answer me in French. We. Oui. Ah. <laughs> um, have you guys got any car news before I get to the good stuff? Um, my E34 is at the garage, being worked on. It will be roadworthy soon, uh, and then we can assess whether or not we're going to do stuff for the mag with it. E34, so just to, just a reminder, that's a 5.0. I... Well, E34 is 5 series, and it is a 5.20i. Yes. So it is a facelift last of the twin headlamp 5 series. Very cool car. Oh, we may have a uh, CV joint for the Renault. That would be very cool. It's attached to the entire drive shaft, and it's is it, costing as much to send from France as it costs for the parts. Has this been handmade by an 80-year-old in a shed in Toulouse? Because it seemed that that was going to be the only available the option. Heroes, I'd be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've been fighting hard because we, we we got a CV joint from somewhere, and it was the again wrong this one. wee word. Yeah, we 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 who, this who, wee word. Hang right. on, I got approval from from at least in before ordering this part. No, no, no. You said you were opposite found me. It, yeah. And and I pointed to order it. it. So you no, you looked at it. it. You, oh. Anyway, 
Um, so it arrived and it was wrong. And then I ordered another one from Germany, which you actually sent me a link to. So if that ever does that arrive, was, that was the right one. That should theory. be the right one. Um, but that was nearly a month ago, and it still hasn't arrived because of. It's longer than a month. It's longer than a month. Yeah, it's taken absolute ages. To I, be fair, though, your the springs that you ordered from the same place the took what eight weeks? Eight weeks, yes. But that was with Christmas in the middle and um, Brexit. Brexit. Yeah. So glad we Brexited. Um, so you get what you hope for, but yeah, the country wanted it. The yeah. country wanted it. We can just, uh, you know, be happy that it is uh, happening. It's possible. Uh, I've had to fill in vote. so many blooming customs forms to send magazines off to different countries in Europe. It's just ridiculous. We had to pay one pound fifty for a jiffy bag the other day um, because the Royal Mail put a sticker on it saying you owe us one pound fifty, and it wasn't even from Europe. It was from Yorkshire. And I blamed <laughs> Brexit without even checking. <laughs> I've had to order some A10 barcodes from Royal Mail to stick on things. I don't know what the barcode pertains to, but I've got to stick on everything that leaves leaves the country. Yeah. And then do uh, shortly, I'll have to automate all sales to an online fancy pants system that I don't understand. Which it's going to cost work. a lot of money. Huh? Which won't work. No, it won't. It won't. Absolute nightmare. Um, but anyway, apart from that ranting there... Um, Yes, so we have... Uh, in, so we may in, potentially be able to actually drive the car that we bought and yes. supposedly finished about two and a half months ago. And sell it. Yeah. Perfect. Wouldn't yeah, it be I'd ironic be if my E34 was finished first? Uh, ironic You've wouldn't be You've mispronounced irritating. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have had to literally pull on, on family ties to talk to some parts department person at Renault en France to, to pull in the right shaft, haven't yes. we? Yes. I probably ought to rephrase that. There's nothing worse than getting an incorrect French shaft. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. You only ever want the right one. A uh, droite. Oui. Oui. Oh. Oui, oui. Actually, it was gauche. But it was sure. gauche. It was gauche, wasn't it? I hope it? so, because yeah. that's one I've ordered. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, the MG had passed its MOT last last podcast, yes. didn't it? So, you yeah, know, apart from that, no car news. The Oh, my A5 is 65 miles off 100,000 miles. Wow. Oh, oh, my E60 ticked over to 170. That's good. Uh, and it is above five degrees, so it now starts and runs <laughs> and I can use it. I thought it was eight degrees. It was eight degrees. It used yeah. to not I start. Depends if it's damp. Well, it is. It's, it's wind yeah. chill. It's sev seven or eight degrees, anything above that, and it's happy to start if with there, no If there's, uh, if there's no like cloud coverage, then it needs to be the full eight degrees. You, you can hope for something if with it, sun. If it's we, mildly moist, then yeah. You cheated it last week, though. You told it it was over eight degrees and lied, and it started up fine, and then it suddenly realised actually it was five degrees, and it conked out on you, didn't it? So I thought it was warmer than it actually was. That's what you have to tell it now. So that and, it I, and I started. I went lie. to start it, and it sort of fired. And then I think it realised what the temperature was. <laughs> do, you, do you like get into it in shorts and t-shirt? Go, oh, it's warm on the table. Send the seats oh, off. Oh, it's sweaty. It's, oh, you don't name your cars, do, do you? Your, your Bimmer doesn't have a name. It's just the Bimmer, or do you call it something else? The E60 doesn't have a name. It's a faceless, oh. faceless beast. Right, the faceless beast. It's emotionless that car. <laughs> emotionless. I haven't named the E34 yet. It should get a name. That's a, that's a car that needs a name. Skoda's uh, the Scud. Scud. Yeah, that was just kind of cool. Scud Missile. Um, yeah, we haven't named E34 yet. Scud it's Missile is launched from the back of a lorry. Yes. Do you have a name for the van? The uh, As in the bus? Yeah. The, oh, is it the bus? Yeah, the traffic. Yeah, we, uh, Peugeot? It's a Peugeot Partner. Expert TP. Oh, it's an expert. It's, it's an expert. It's a proper van van. Um, TPL2, long wheel TP means it's got windows. Yes. Which are now full of cages as well. It's got we can we can fit fourteen dogs in cages. Oh, dogs! Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, dogs. Or small dogs. people, or bits of people. Um, but yeah, no, we don't. We just call it the bus at the moment. And I call it. I do have a name for it, which I'm not going to use on this because uh, it's it's offensive. But um, it refers to. Is it shitbox? No, I I quite I don't like it. I just I kind of tolerate it. It's got air suspension. You love it. Don't be coy. Um, no, I don't love it. I don't love it. I'm pretty pretty honest when it comes to love with cars. I'm I'm the first to put my hand up in the air and Well we got onto that shortly. Yeah. And um yeah, though we just call it the bus. Just call it the bus. I do call it a wagon for us things because it's got conversions on it, but I'm not gonna do that here. I was gonna say is there anything to do with the winch in the back of the cages? <laughs> yes. That's that, that's a that's a different kind of bus. Oh I've got an yeah. E thirty six as well. 
You do have an E36. I, I always yeah. forget that car exists. I well, think you that just has amazed it hasn't blown away overnight. Yeah, no, well, we have we have the trouble. with it had the parachute the deployed out the back this morning when I came in. <laughs> yeah, as when I came in, in, I came in, <laughs> came in this morning, <laughs> didn't I? I came in here and uh, she Tune shot her in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ian told me it looked like a uh, landed rocket booster, which indeed did. It did, uh, yeah. Streamlined and supersonic and powerful. And Burned up by the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, crusty and rusty <laughs> and dense. It's okay to see a light. I think that has a name, but I think it's number plate related. And I can't remember what the plate is. So oh, You can't remember the name? That's awkward. When I meet people, I can't remember the name. I just call them mate. I might have driven that car once. Yeah, here. And I thought you were going, it. I've literally yeah. only driven it once. I thought you oh, were no, going no, a green twice. goddess for it. Hey? I thought you were going a green, green goddess for it. No, it's not big enough for that. If it was I was about to say, series, it's not as useful. <laughs> Ian is being particularly unpleasant. I, I had a, a, a tirade of abuse. It's because he's still upset. It's not that unjustified. Though. He's still upset that it's the bottom end has failed on his A5 and he just won't. Has it? it? No. Of course, he's getting through a litre of oil for every litre of fuel. That's, a, that's just Jeez. a seal. It, don't say that's just a TFSI because I own a TFSI and it's not doing it. It doesn't get through that much oil. So you need a bottom end rebuild too. I, I haven't put oil in it for ages. You've driven the car yeah, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and you don't do that voluntarily. You're always sad when you get out of the capture. Just like, oh, I'm in this crippy fridge car. Oh, yeah, he hates it. But looking he at the front tyres, he clearly drives it hard. Well, he God, I, have I, you ever I had, had a right slip on the way in today. Yeah. Oh, I nearly, I nearly put Lots the BMW, of leaves on the, on the road. I nearly put the five series through a flipping fence yesterday at Gloucester Airport. How? Just uh, there must be diesel on the entrance into Gloucester Airport. I turned in with some vigour. I was going to say, did you have a it, Glasgow moment? It, it literally just understeered oh. the whole way around. So I got out the car all shaky, and then a slightly <laughs> pale-looking Rich turns up in a massive Shogun. <laughs> He's done the same. And he jumped out. I went, oh, I need to write the car off. And he went, oh, you have to the Shogun. But he can't see over the bloody steering wheel in the Shogun. That's the problem. He also doesn't know how fast he's going. No, because <laughs> the speedo don't work. <laughs> and everything at that height looks pretty fast. Hey, low mileage Shogun for sale, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing. The MOT, the miles haven't gone up at all in the last three years in the MOT, which is... I'm insane. sure he'll have it corrected once oh. he's got... Sorry, the maintenance hasn't gone up either. So. <laughs> it's DIY. -wide. Um, oh, and then yeah. we had a slight, slight sort of vehicle news, wasn't it? Um, our beloved Rich had a blowout on his motorbike on the oh, way to yes. work the other day. Yeah, and he went to, and rescued him. I had to yeah. go out in my. Uh, you did rescue him, yeah. ADAC support vehicle <laughs> um, with a can of tire weld. It's a can of tire weld that didn't work. Boo Holtz, you boo, boo tire company. Tire weld never works. Well, it's just, it's it just was, for peppering the inside of your wheel arch. We did everything yeah. they said to do, and it said it's useful. Use, uh, Good on motorbikes. Works on motorbikes. I would never do that on a motorbike. It person. was absolutely useless. It just put a ton of gloop all over the floor, and it still was. You sound like my Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we even went and bought a pack of screws to put a screw in the hole just to get it somewhere to get the tyre done. Mm -hmm. That didn't work either. So you had to get... Uh, yeah, well, we were going to go out and rescue it because I suggested we get the, the, the old trailer that we've got and go and load it up. But well, the RAC came in and put one yeah. of those twisty, pulley, stringy, rubbery, pluggy things in. Oh, OK. And, uh, tow rope. He, he, um, <laughs> <laughs> not sure it one. along behind. Can he tow rope a motorbike? Maybe. Can. <laughs> Shouldn't. <laughs> Once. Um, yeah, and he got home. In the oh. end, so he came back again, though, didn't he? So, yeah, yeah, so he's had a new tire on that now. <laughs> that's all the vehicle news, though, isn't it? That's all the car news. Yeah, yeah, I, well, think I think that's it. Okay, okay. So so okay. <laughs> yeah, Go okay. On. Well, VOD, VOD's had some work. Um, so VOD the A3 3.7 hybrid, the one that you're definitely not going to modify, definitely. One. Yeah, the one I'm definitely not modifying, apart from the wheels, apart from the wheels and the spacers. And the exhaust. Well, now now it's got a, an exhaust as well. And, and the brakes. The brakes are off uh, their 360 mil big honking ones off a D3 and then S8 brakes at the back. So I'm definitely not modifying that. Um, and something else, but I can't remember what. There were some things that have been fixed and some things haven't. Um, shout out to uh, the D2 doctor, uh, Michaela, down in Devon uh, for doing a lovely job. Um, oh, and Kevin. Hope, you, hope, you, hope you're enjoying your retirement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin put the sort of pension. H H -I LED HIDs. What have you? Put uh, in yeah, it? that's the point. Yeah, so I got I got some LED bulbs for the dipped. It's got a H one dipped beam through a projector H1 and then N1 H and then H seven H seven full beam. And I got LED bulbs for both. And then the full beam, which is just a normal reflector, works brilliantly. But dipped beams worse than just a halogen. 
um, and they were utterly terrible. So I decided to look at HID kits. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. Huh? I was waiting for like 30 seconds for him to say HID there. HID, right, okay. And, See my and money on the I learn. saw the legal ones at 35 watts and thought, yeah, that looks cool. And then I saw the, the off-road use only 55 watt HID kits and I thought, you were the kid at, you, were the, you were the kid at college that bought the green laser pen, weren't you? Like everybody uh, had the red ones and it was fun. And then you came along like, I've got this green one, it's aviation banned. <laughs> I got shafted for bringing an air gun into into school mostly. I wonder why. Um, you I wonder why? Huh? I wonder why. Well, it was I used it fairly. The people they, I'd lent it to didn't is, use it very well, but I I never shot anybody. Is with air it. rifle hunting part of PE in private schools? No, it was a pistol for a start, CO2 pistol, and I'd also replaced the plastic BBs that came with with metal ones because they seem to make people squeal better. Funnily enough, I had a similar situation, but uh, the police caught me with mine. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I mean... In public. I, in, oh, that's awkward. It I, looked very much like a Glock, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, That's I think, what the shopkeeper it's, said. It's a genuine story. Yeah. We were just out messing around with BB guns, but apparently a member of the public saw a young man waving a Glock around. Uh, the police didn't... Didn't take, find it entertaining. No, they didn't find it very funny. And that had stainless steel ball bearings, and that yeah. actually was what annoyed them the most. A, a okay. that it looked like a real... Real gun. Real handgun. Well, mine was mine was a Glock 17. It was Glock 17L with the extended barrel. But an airgun version. A CO2 version, yeah. Was did it you, did you have like a green laser on it no. as well? No, mine I didn't have a laser sight. Mine was a G10 BB gun. Okay. Was look, that, does that look more like a P226? No, it was just a BB gun, a spring-loaded BB gun. Okay. So not enough to do any real damage, but enough to scare a load of... Oh, you put up a nostril. A friend of mine got shot point blank up the nostril. That hurt. Yeah, so that was... Uh, yeah, that was... Um, that was an interesting uh, exchange with the police when I was a mm. kid. So I learnt my lesson after that. Yeah. Don't but, carry handguns around. Well, I used to hang out with a guy who we call Kiwi because he was from New Zealand. Lovely guy, but he had full-size swords. And he bought this samurai sword and wandered around the cathedral close in Winchester with it. And the police sort of um, thought it was inappropriate. And that was, a, that was an interesting conversation. If that's the most inappropriate thing that's gone on inside Winchester Cathedral, I'll be surprised. <laughs> True. Well, no, lots of historical things gone on there, but I won't go into it in detail because that will really alienate people. So, yeah, the, the old, um, old VODs, now uh, I got the alignment done. So it's now um, modified, is what you're trying to say. The car really, that you It's got no more power, and it's just got better brakes. Which, because I, on on the few times I've had to drive rapidly from one place to the other, I realised the brakes conk out after about ten minutes of intensive driving. And now I've got big 360 mil rotors on the front and and proper brakes at the back. Um, I can. I, it goes for at least thirty minutes before they they cook. So oh, that's why good. don't you just leave the house earlier? I've got stuff to do. It's the typical. Yeah, no, I, I don't get that very often. I don't get that very often. I, I can make it in Uncrashable 2. I made it here. I can literally save six minutes of my life driving like my hair's on fire as opposed to just cruising. And what have you done with those six minutes, Bert? Well, quite. How have you spent them? I, a multitude of ways. A multitude of ways. I, a lot of it, for example, I've been growing a beard. That is really? a commendable way to give back to the community with those six minutes. Exactly. Exactly. I, I give, you know, counter-terrorist response teams quite a, quite a scale. It also that. gives people prior warning to who you are when they see you bearded up. <laughs> yes, it does. It's it? like a pre-warning. <laughs> like, you know, beware. <laughs> Caution. You know, if you do approach me, I've got a beard. So, you know, understand that so I... And you wear a hooded it. parker as well. So, hooded, well, you don't anymore. I don't wear a hooded that, parker. Where's that gone? I, I, Has it died? I'm not aware of having a hooded that, parker. That old, the old one used to wear. Anyway, whatever. Oh, my, my triclimate. Yeah, it became a little bit sort of biclimate and then monoclimate, so it's not waterproof anymore. So I thought, what's the point? So I've got myself a, a, a little pack. If of only mag. you worked within an industry where you could get hold of reproofing products. Eh, well, it had holes in it. That's why it was. Ah, well, that's a different. Story. That's How a bit get different. Your arms in? Huh? How are you going to get your arms in? Uh, I just, I, I never really did the zip because the zip buggered more or less once I bought it, which is why I've got a Packamac now. I much prefer my Packamac. I wander around in that. Is it, is it a branded Packamac? It is a brand. It's just there in front of you. So it is, it is branded as a Packamac? Well, no, it's a, it's a like what I call a Cagoule sometimes, but in this company I call a Packamac. Because you know a Mac is a Macintosh jacket. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, don't you like the colour? I like so it. It's a North Face jacket. It's a North Face jacket. It's a North Face anorak. I've got a North Face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like an eternal frown. We're skirting around a topic that we are. Which, Come on which, then. Which, Get okay, on with it. so um, 
back a long, long time ago in 2008 when I was gainfully employed and making money and felt like a useful member of society uh, working in, in, in computers. That's amazing. Um, I bought you my... actually felt like a useful member of society. I know. It was a brief feeling. Um, I went out and splashed out denial. <laughs> on, on a nearly new X-Demo Subaru Legacy 3-litre R-Spec B. And it's the newest car, most expensive I've ever spent on a car in one go. I was going to say, just yeah. check yourself before on, you say that. On that. Uh, and it was only a year and a bit old. It had been on a forecourt in Northern Ireland. Bear in mind, we're talking mid-recession here. Um, and it was listed up at about 32 grand. And they couldn't sell it after a year. It came back to Birmingham, where the kind of Subaru UK is. And I picked it up for a Instantly was, lost was. half its value. Yeah. And they basically said, if you can buy it today, we'll do it for sort of just over 10 grand, um, sort of paying cash sort of thing. So I did. So I got a car that was 14 months old. Shout out to like HMRC miles. if that was never recorded by the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's dead now, unfortunately. Um, Who, hey, HMRC? No, the, oh. the, 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 the guy who used to run it. Um, and um, anyway, so I bought it and I had it for four years and I put on, we think, about 87,000 miles. And that was when I was a rep. It was all over the place. I towed, I towed a bus out the way in the snow in Norfolk. I got from Cambridge to Stoke-on-Trent through the night after two jobs overran um, in the snow. And I got from Mitchell Library in the centre of Glasgow down to Western Hospital um, overnight again for an emergency call out and so what that you're car is there. performed exactly as a car is expected to it was a friend it well i mean bear in mind that bert getting from uh a, to a, a, to B. B. a to b and back again is quite an achievement for any vehicle he owns it's now, statistically yes. unlikely yes um went down on holiday down south of france in it went round holland went drifting with my friend len over in holland with not it, in it. Down not in it yeah well no you didn't, didn't go drifting no, in no, it. no hell no what did you go drifting in bert in lens and pretzer which is cool. I thought you drove a BMW. Oh yeah, no, I did. I did. I, All right, the just training that there was at least one superior car at the, on the trip. Yeah, no, well, it was a proper training centre. I spent ages there doing it, and the, yeah, the base training car was three two five E thirty sixes, which car. overheated all the time. Oh, that's what me saying. Oh yeah, I took, I took the captor down to uh, Castle Coombe. Oh, wait, you went on a track. <laughs> No, no, I just put the car park. No. Yeah, I just went there. Yeah, no, well, we hit downtown Amsterdam. We did all sorts. I oh, know I can't repeat most of it here because some of it was quite criminal. I mean, if Len could... if, if was involved, all of it was. Yeah, <laughs> it was I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the dikes in, have big grass verges, and so we were drifting side by side you... up and down the dikes in um, in Holland, and that was that was awesome. Um, but again, it was next to a nuclear power station. We ended up getting moved on by the police, who were very stroppy, and they have guns there. And I asked him if he could speak English to the policeman. He said, "Of course, I speak effing English." He didn't use the effing; he used the real word. But My God! There is no F in English. No, you no. Can't and spell. I got swore at by a very angry police officer with a gun, and My I was, gun I was unimpressed. English. <laughs> <laughs> so they were the days. But anyway, so we cycle forward now, and uh, I've 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 moved away from IT and, and into this lovely industry, and. Um, I ended up selling the car. It had a, loads of bits on it and a rebuild it, engine tune all sorts, and I sell the car. And I was regret it. It had an EML engine management light on, and I never got to the bottom of it and stuff like that, so I sold it. Um, occasionally, I'd look online, type in the registration to the MOT check and the history check, and I could find no, no record. So I presumed it had been crashed or scrapped, and oh, I was if only. saddened. And then on uh, recently, I went and looked at another face of spec B, um, and I looked at it, and I thought, this car was two years younger than mine and it was in barely ropey condition, lots of lovely bits on it, and the guy selling it was a lovely Canadian chappy. Um, and I said no, I forced myself to say no because I felt this this wasn't the right one. It and was then, an estate though, that it one. It was an estate. Which I must admit, before we get on to what's actually happened... So an estate or in a state? Both. <laughs> Both, yes. Just state. <laughs> uh, I do think that's the better one of the two. I agree. I, was, I, I always regretted not getting the estate, but they were big money, whereas the saloons, nobody wanted a three-litre petrol saloon in a recession. Um, and the spec B was a Sorry, what's changed car. now? It's, 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 we're not really it's just that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Newport Blue. It's lovely. Uh, it was. And... Um, Anyway, then I came back literally just on the weekend and went on to eBay my save searches, which is Subaru Legacy, Subaru Legacy Spec B, Subaru Legacy H6, Subaru Legacy 3 litre, etc., etc. And I get notification emails every day for all of my search terms. And uh, this came on, I just casually looked and I thought, that looks like that car has got rotor gras wheels on, just like mine. And then I keep looking, I keep looking, thinking, well, mine had tints at the back. Oh, that's had the rear quarters tint. What, what the hell? Anyway realized it was my car and it was for sale down in Westbury um, and I was amazed and gobsmacked and messaged him immediately and then the eBay auction went off live and I didn't ask him to take it off live and I was terrified that somebody else had jumped on it because he only wanted two seven for it and those you know in in most circumstances that 
particular spec of car would be going for five, six, seven grand now with the prices. Um, so anyway, long story short, I went and saw it. And the car, um, I left it at 87,000 in 2013, and it's now on 100 and, I think 109,000 in 2021. So in that period of time, bear in mind as a sales rep, I was doing 30K miles a year, um, and then just sort of normal driving about 20K miles a year. So it done sod all miles since the engine rebuild and since everything's been spent on it. And so I bought it back and I actually nailed them down another 300 quid because you didn't realize it's got STI four pot, big, big Brembo calipers on there. It's got loads and loads of stuff on it, including custom built AST coilovers. But you've uh, already paid for those ones. Yeah, I paid for those. So ones, there's yeah. no point paying for them again. Which I didn't because the guy did, thought it was unmodified pretty much and just sold it to seven, which is why it was so dirt cheap, as well as the fact it didn't have an MOT, but it only went out in December. So what you're saying yes. is that you've I, owned the car twice and both times it was a bargain and it's cost you in total five grand without even owning it uh well no i regard it as i've loaned it well, to the, two the other people price in the first place as well that's what i was trying to work yeah. out yeah I've, I've loaned it effectively to two or three people who i don't know and paid them five grand for it and 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 received four grand well 16 with the original purchase no uh, no because bear in mind i then sold it for like six and a half yeah so you paid 10 for it or 11. I call it 11. So you paid 11, sold it for six and a half. Right, so it's four and a half grand. Yeah. And then you've just given another two, two and a half grand to it back. Two, so four. you've basically spent seven grand. On a so it's cost you seven grand in total. Yeah, but I've had like four years of l l glorious ownership, a hundred thousand miles almost, and you know that's pretty good going. You you buy you go out and spend fifty grand on a BMW, then sell it a year later. Or I could go and spend seventeen hundred quid on a BMW, keep it for two and a bit years, and sell it for seventeen hundred. Yeah, well, yeah, but then you just end up with a BMW. No, because they'll sell it and have seventeen hundred quid again. Which is exactly where you were in the first place. It's just exactly. like just going through a dip. But I've had a car for three years. You've yeah. not had a car for eight years. Well. And it's cost you five, seven grand. Well, yeah, just shush. Um, point being is I've got a BL5 facelift, <laughs> Spec B saloon, and uh, I've been reunited. And there are some things that they've done that I don't like done. They've added a plastic shark fin aerial, you which is non-functional. You were talking about it. No, well, that, that's say that also I had a full set of gauges sort of nicely put on it, and they've just ripped those off, which has ripped up the top of the dashboard, which is annoying. That's and good. they've put fake carbon fibre stickers oh, on the other holes. Oh, that's painful. Terrible, terrible scene. Well, apart from that, the car's in good order, yeah? And they've ripped off the rear tints, which I had done professionally, and so I've just got rear quarter light tints, which is bizarre. But actually, I can now see where I'm reversing, which is nice. Um, to be fair, the Labrador's getting in and out of the back probably scratched up the tints, so they had to remove them. It's, no, actually, rear seats are absolute mint. I never used them, and the pre next owners obviously never used them either. The weird thing, though, is that they've put back, you know the emergency release you get in the boot of a saloon so you don't go kidnapping? No. So in modern cars, by law, you have to have a glow-in-the-dark pull handle that oh, yeah, releases you, the boot. You just cut the cable and take that out. Well, I did that, but it's back in. Um. So when it, because it went to a dealer, it's used as a Partex and a dealer. They've, they've put on, they first of all took off my nice carbon fiber grill and put a rubbish stock chrome one on. And um, they've also replaced the emergency kidnap escape thing that I cut off because I quite often put people in the back of my car and I don't like them escaping. Well, well I did in those from days. that though, it's fine, is it? Uh, there's a little bit of routine maintenance that needs doing to get through the MOT. It needs a couple of discs. Well, it needs four discs and it needs kind of eight pads. So it, um, needs, it needs the brakes replacing? No, not the calipers. Calipers are grand. I'd well, actually, I've got new pins for the rear calipers. Fluid as well. Yeah, yeah I've got, I've got fluid too. I'll probably got... check the flexes because you know it's uh, like braided. 16 years old. Yeah, they're, years they're, old. They're, they're actually top quality hell braided ones that I put on um, shortly before, well, a year or two before I sold it. So they'll be grand. And the rear coilovers. Rear coilovers been snagged on four MOTs. Yeah, but ignored. they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what they're looking at. Those are top quality AST coilovers, and they've done less than twenty thousand miles. They're absolutely fine. In how many years? In quite a few years. But so my they're about 10 years old. Yeah, about 10 years old. So 10-year-old coilovers. Yeah, that's a fair point. I'll yeah. have a look at them. They're non-standard. And uh, uh, how's line, the rear quarter? Rear quarter, well, I was about to say the white line anti-roll bars and the anti-lift kit and the roll center adjust kit that's all on it. That's all nice and still present. They haven't robbed it of those. How are the bushes? Uh, bushes all fine because it's all polyed. I polybushed the whole car. 10 years ago. Yeah. Did you Have you had a chance to look at what brand of Chinese tyre have been put on there? Uh, no, he's got Avon ZS somethings on ZZRs. there. ZZRs? Yes. So, uh, where is How I? old? Ten well, years old. I'll I was going to say, they're going to be ex-autobahns, aren't they? <laughs> well, I sold it with T1Rs on. Hey, which hey. I, 
Don't I, knock my Polish friends. Tires. <laughs> one, one thing yeah. I would. <laughs> you're laughing when you go and get tires for the capture. They don't have any. They will do though. They don't have just, any. Just, just yeah. ring the guy. You'll find them. Well, I was probably drive... off the back of yours, but nobody in Germany drives <laughs> cars with 17-inch rims. That's, on them. Uh, that's true. But people visit from France. Uh. So I sold the car with T1R rims on Toyos, which I loved. But actually, um, James's James's recommendation and the fact that Uncrashable came with what's on, on Uncrashable? You, you, Michelin, uh, no, no, Goodyear. Uh, Goodyear Eagle F1 Asymmetricos. That's the one. That's what I want to put on it because they're which Ian awesome. hates, but I love. No, I just hate them on hated them on the uh, it, A5. It's yeah. weird that it they does, weren't good on your car. Don't, oh, it does so. Toyos Toyo, don't work on quite. Toyos are great on light cars, but on I agree with you on heavy cars. T1Rs are not are not particularly. Well, brilliant. the Adio 8Rs that I used to run on the mm. Peugeot were unbeatable on the Peugeot, but a friend had them on something else. Can't remember what it was. They were rubbish. Yeah, I always used to have T1Rs on on the MG. T1Ss is where it's at. Mm. Them. I never had a had a set. Oh, what were the other T1Rs? Because you had the R triple eights, which I had tried once and then regretted. The eights. The what? The EA triple No, no, R triple Toyos. Oh, okay, fine. I was going to say EA triple in the wet. And then I had Yoko ADO forty eights and loved those. No, the R triple eight is the track tire. So yes. I'd be surprised if you had that on a road car. I did. I did on my three hundred six. R triple eights. Yeah, they were the ones with the very few cuts in there, and I thought I was terribly cool until it started raining and it bloody terrifying. <laughs> right, because they now do an R triple eight R, which is a road legal track day tire. Oh, okay. Which is supposed to be pretty good, but again. It, the, the ADOA R's have been replaced by the RS and they're nowhere near as good. Mm-hmm. Um, but just, you know, the, for me, those asymmetrical Eagle mm-hmm. F1s are just incredible tyres. I love them. I love them. And, and they're also damn sight cheaper than PS4s and stuff like that. So. Yeah, oh, but PS4s, PS4s are, they, yeah. they are a cut above. That's yeah. why they're more expensive than the Eagle F1s. Well, I've got the, um, on VOD, the uh, all-terrain, not all-terrain, the all-season, all-season Michelin ones cost an absolute fortune. I'm not that impressed. I've had a yeah, puncture on the cycle. You put PS4s on something. You went to on cost- your car? no. You you went and got the same deal. No, we went. No, I got the same deal, but used I put on all seasons rather than uh, PS4s. Okay. Yeah, but the all season tire is what it is. It's it's supposed to be a good all round tire. Yeah, but no. So but it's never going to excel at anything. Thin side. It got a puncture from just going through a a pothole. It and as you say, it doesn't excel at anything. Yeah, but you, we so know that pothole in Gloucestershire can be deep. quite excessive. And, and, yeah, and, and, and we know that D twos are hard. On their tires. tires, they are in twenty inches, but it's an eighteen inch, and it's a fairly standard size mm, tire. On I that. still it's think forty five. I, yeah. I mean, my dad did four um, Pilot Sports on his A eight mm. at once. Jeez, and yeah. we, we switched out for Dunlop SP Sports, and they were brilliant. And yes, if hit, and if you hit the pothole at a funny angle as well, it yeah. is at a funny, funny angle. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, we've got this new one there, and yeah, the rear quarter, as James keeps on alluding to, basically, when I had the car, uh, I had a disagreement with a chappy who was uh, forcing himself upon a lady, and uh, he got very angry with me, and then suddenly realised I was a foot taller than him and quite scary, so he ran away and then keyed my car as a return for it. So did he key your car after you spoke, and he realised you weren't that scary? Uh, he no, sort of I, ran away and he went, yes, yeah, well, don't come back. No, went, I, I was, I was in, I was, in, God. <laughs> I was in full RSM mode and, and, and he, yeah, no, I, I, uh, it was, it was fairly intense. Were you criticizing him because he wasn't holding the chloroform properly? No, I was holding him off the ground by the back of his neck until he squeaked. You, so I was, I was quite angry and I don't lose my temper very often. In fact, the last time I seriously remember losing my temper was 1999 when somebody pulled a rug from underneath me and I had a full jug of coffee that went over my face. <laughs> I'd love to see that. That was very painful. <laughs> I, I, he, was a, he was a small chap from Hong Kong, but it didn't stop me. Um, anyway. Not sure why that was relevant. Uh, well, he was a great fighter. We used to do fight club at, at school. We were kind of forced into it, and and he he was but the talented. first rule of fight club. Jesus. Yeah, no, but we were forced in it. It Is, wasn't like a club uh, that we wanted to be a part of. Fun, so it was just you know, yeah. it's where they no criticism. Yeah. <laughs> well, money was made anyway. So he keyed the car, and then I forced him to fix it, and he did. Took it to a cheap spray shop somewhere, and um, I think he actually fixed it. When you said you need to fix it, I think he actually did. No, it. no, because I picked it up in the end, and it was a it was a spray shop down Somerset way, and it was not great in the first place but now the lacquer has literally decayed into a white crystalline mess and it's horrible so a so bit like on your other Subaru shut up and um, so <laughs> I'm patent. debating and I'd, I'd, I'll talk to James and see what he reckons to it but whether I just Ooh. get you scrap it shut up um, whether to say thanks get it you know? sprayed or well you'd just I have, be a I ball have, of sarcasm I have something to do with this industry as well you know yeah I, I can I can criticise your paint just as well as James yeah but your usual response is I don't care 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Was care. James James actually I helped? I don't pretend to care. You don't care either. Though. No, no he I does. really don't. I really don't. He does. Underneath. Not when he comes to your cars, it doesn't. Okay. I'll have a look though and laugh. Okay. Right. I, I've got Richard's phone number. I see. He's been much more sympathetic because he remembers the car in its heyday. Um, he must be after something. Yes, yes. <laughs> I thought the same. Um, but uh, yeah, so the question is whether I get that area resprayed, whether I leave it, or whether I wrap the whole car because my partner uh, is already worried because she's jealous. Kerosene? Well, my my partner's jealous of the car already because she hates how I'm nostalgic about the past and reminisce and night terrors and stuff like that. So she uh, hates the car already. And I thought if it goes the color that she, her favorite color is teal. I was going to say, is it in the wrong color. color blue? It is. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Checking. Um, and so he. In fact, both your series are the wrong color blue. They, yeah, neither of them are the, are the proper well, blue. Purple, so. Well, neither of them are any blue. They're they're just they're not blue they're just not anything well i mean they're such nondescript blue super they, shooting in the face with those colors yeah well New, newport blue the, the estate i looked at on the weekend was a darker blue which i didn't much like but newport blue is a really nice color when it's when it's looking good if you see me when it's prepped um but no i, I teal is there's a teal flip 3m um no wrap which no, no. which charlie no. said she liked no, no. Um, no, but your favourite colour is teal as well, isn't it? No, it my favourite colour until your Subaru went. The <laughs> <laughs> my favourite colour is teal because BMW did a teal colour which was right. called Fiji Green. Okay, and it was on the E36s, extremely extremely rare M3s. Yeah. And it, was on, like the, it was on the Z3. Oh, they look so good. The Z3s. Is it a, a kind of a darker green? I, I'm, no, it's teal. It is teal, right? Yeah, as bright yeah, as you can yeah. get. It was the it was the green that was on the Listerine E36 British touring cars. Yes, with you now. With uh, Steve Soper and... Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Tim Harvey. Tim Harvey. Oh, Mo yeah. Moving Pre on, you know, keep yeah. staying, staying on the same, um, same, same sort of thread, uh, green Subarus. Mm. We... You had a green Subaru. Ah, yes, indeed. Uh, Uncrashable 2 has been... By the way, that's the last time we're ever going to mention your other Subaru in sure. any publication that we do, so um, enjoy the moment. Is, is, uh, was in lockdown, and uh, that's a white BE5 RSK single turbo converted, uh, and you've probably seen it already in the magazine because we use it quite a lot here and there. And anyhow, Usually the one parts up in the background with a pop bonnet. Yes, yes, it is because everybody, everybody wants to see over. the EJ20. Um, but the uh, it got very green over lockdown and a bit fluffy on the inside and not good fluffy, not like 1970s fluffy. I'm talking spore fluffy, spore fluffy exactly. Um, and in all sorts of orifices, the steering wheel was about an inch sort of bigger in diameter as a consequence of it. So we that's uh, the only redeeming feature of that car, I'm afraid. What it's got a good steering wheel. That's not the only redeeming feature. Well, not anymore, it doesn't. It's literally the only redeeming feature of that vehicle. I don't I even like, like the steering wheel. I don't like it. that Momo full spoke. I, I really want a Nardi wheel without the airbag on. But that Momo full spoke is what was fitted to the Blob IC Subarus. Yes. And I drove a brand new WRX when they came out, and I actually wanted one. Yeah. See? I've, I'm a changed man. You could have been something. You've evolved, I have you've evolved was something. <laughs> I was a 23 year old with a shark nose. <laughs> I think. Gather round, children. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you a tale. <laughs> In the back of my shark nose. Um, so, yeah, the. No. <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> I just sorry. Any, any any sort of young man with a flash beamer, I always imagine is involved in crime somehow. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. Yep. So there we go. Um, so that's a fact. But I was selling counterfeit DB7 K N N air filters out of the bin from <laughs> Aston Martin. <laughs> Genuinely true. Yeah. They throw them away. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, not sure that's technically kind oh, of uh, hardcore crime. Front splitters off 911s that also went in the bin and I took out. Okay. Because, you know, them boy racer boys want splitters. No, I think fair, that's just it's a bump that ever goes on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, and, and so we bought over here, and we actually happened to have a, uh, what do you call them? The Skylift. The Skylift. And so we wobbled sky on the Skylift around, and I've got a really cool video in the, in, in the process, which will be coming out. And for once, it's not going to have a gobshite like me talking over the top of it. It's going to be quite a stylized video, not too long, um, showing the, the demolding of, well, the degreening, should we say. Degreening? Is that? De algae. De de al 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 Algicide. Algae. Algicide. Oh, that, that's... I knew somebody called algae once. Algae side. Well, it sounds something like terrible that happens in Africa. 
It does, doesn't it? Well, it happened here in Gloucestershire, so uh, and we have it on film, and it's quite funky. So uh, keep your eyes pinned to our YouTube channel for that. Anyhow, we have natted on well long enough. Uh, the sun has gone down. I think we couldn't see it at all today, um, and um, we shall be back in the not too far distance. But in the meantime, keep an eye on our Facebook page, keep an eye on the YouTube channel, and uh, we are beavering away currently with issue 13, which will be out in July. Uh, we will open up the 2021 subs in due course. It won't be too long left yet. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from me ta -ra.